Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is another privilege for me under God to welcome you on today's broadcast. I want to thank God for your life and I also want to thank God for the privilege of fellowship. God is faithful, God is good, God is kind. He is true for all his promises. Whatever he promised, he can do. And whatever he says from his mouth, his hands can perform. As you keep trusting him, you will find him faithful, just like he did in the previous generation. It is well with you. Let me welcome you on today's broadcast. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this weekly privilege known as navigating life through grace. Thank you, Lord, for what you have been doing. Thank you for the deposit of the truth, the seed of the word that is being planted every week in the hearts of men. Lord, I ask that today the Holy Ghost will reveal the heart of the Father to everyone connecting to this broadcast and that this broadcast will be a major contribution to the development of God's purpose in the lives of men and women and in the lives of everyone who is either connected or who will later come across this broadcast. Let your name alone be glorified. We receive the truth in its clarity and accuracy. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let me welcome you once again on today's broadcast. Today, I am continuing in the series of teachings that I began in the last 19 weeks, which is generally titled, Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. This series of teachings is packaged at the instance of the Holy Ghost to comfort and strengthen the believers in God through Jesus Christ at such a time as this. It is a timely scriptural message and a much needed encouragement to sustain the believers' trust in God and keep their faith in His promises regardless of the unpredictable circumstances of life. The general focus of this series of teachings is to empower the believers of these last and perilous days with the scriptural truths that will practically strengthen their personal work with God and provoke their faith to experience the miraculous in the face of the impossible. I am confident in the Holy Ghost that, as a believer, this series of teachings will do seven things for you. Number one, it will personally develop your faith in the Word of God. Number two, it will strengthen your dependence and trust in God. Number three, it will stabilize your feet through the storms of life. This series of teachings generally titled, Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. Number four, will enhance the consistency of your scriptural confession regardless of your physical condition. Number five, it will empower you to live a supernatural life in a natural world. Number six, it will keep you bold and courageous in the face of satanic harassment and intimidation. This series of teachings, generally titled Look Up, God's Way is Not Down. Number seven, will propel you to experience and enjoy the victory that Christ had made available to you as a believer through redemption in his blood. These seven critical objectives are the objectives of the Holy Ghost that this teaching is expected to manifest in your life. Today, I shall continue to focus on what I call selected examples of biblical characters that looked up to God in extremely critical circumstances. Selected examples of biblical characters that looked up to God in extremely critical circumstances, part four. At the end of today's broadcast, I believe 
that as a believer, you will be encouraged and stirred up in the spirit to take advantage of the lessons and benefits of biblical examples as you believe God to do incredible things in the midst of seemingly impossible circumstances today. I am confident in the Holy Spirit that the truth of today's broadcast will undoubtedly deepen your personal trust in God and in His Word in spite of the general hopelessness that has become a global phenomenon. So let me go straight to the focus for today, selected examples of biblical characters that looked up to God in extremely critical circumstances, part four. I'm taking my text from Romans chapter 15, verse four. Romans chapter 15, verse four. The Bible says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Brethren, the Bible is replete with characters that looked up to God in absolute trust and dependence. In other words, the instances of people who chose to trust God for his miraculous intervention in their peculiar situation and in different generations are numerous and scattered all through the scriptures. They manifested a strong and an abiding faith in the living God. If it were possible for them to witness miracle as a result of their faith, there is nothing disturbing miracles in our days if we will manifest the same faith. This is because the God of yesterday is still the same God today and will remain the same God forever. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. According to Romans chapter 15 verse 4, which I've just read, Biblical examples must never be taken for granted. Biblical examples are deliberately included by the Holy Spirit in the biblical account for specific purposes. As we read through them, we must be sensitive enough to the various spiritual lessons that are instructive for our lives today and the hidden benefits that can be experienced if we emulate the good examples and avoid the bad examples. The stories of biblical examples or characters provoke hope in us for the assurance of a mighty manifestation of God in our affairs. There are five critical lessons and benefits of biblical examples. Number one, biblical examples help us to understand God better by giving us practical insight into the nature of God, the attributes of God, the power of God, and the moons of God. As we look at these Bible characters, it helps us to understand who God is, what exactly moves him, what does not move him, his power, his character, and his attributes. They also give us an understanding of how to provoke the power of God for miraculous intervention and the negative human attitudes that can turn his power off. Number two, biblical examples help us to find the courage to believe that if fellow human beings with similar passions and natural limitations can relate with God and secure his attention for miraculous intervention, then it is not out of place for us today and as human beings to secure divine intervention and attention in our affairs. Number three, biblical examples reveal that the same God that intervened in different conditions of different people in different generations is still the same that can intervene in different human affairs in this generation. Abraham, Joseph, and Jabez were different biblical characters that looked up to God 
for different things and who lived in different generations. While Abraham was looking up to God for his son, Joseph was believing God for the fulfillment of his dreams and deliverance from the prison custody, and Jabez was trusting God for blessing, for supernatural enlargement of his coast, for divine presence, and for divine protection. The same God that attended to Abraham in his generation, according to Genesis chapter 25, verse 2 to 5, and Genesis chapter 24, verse 1, attended to Joseph, according to Genesis chapter 41, verses 51 and 52, and also that same God attended to Jabez, according to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Even different biblical characters that have similar problems but lived in different generations saw the miraculous interventions of the same God. The same God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace of fire and delivered Daniel from the lion's den in their generation, according to Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 to 30, and Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 to 28, is the same God that delivered Peter, then Paul and Silas from the shackles and fetters of the prison in their generation according to Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 verse 1 to 17 and Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 verse 16 to 40. Interestingly, brethren, this God is still the same in our own day. Knowing this as a believer is sufficient to quicken your hope for the miraculous today. Number four. Biblical examples established a common and acceptable divine pattern that believers must follow and observe to connect to the miraculous irrespective of their color, background, status, language, and tribe, and regardless of their generation. From the various biblical examples, the common pattern in the lives of those that God moved for was one, their absolute faith, very critical. Number two, their unshakable trust in God. Number three, their naturally impossible confidence. And number four, their total dependence on God, notwithstanding the hopelessness of their natural circumstances and condition. Those were the common pattern that those that God moved for in their generation demonstrated. Once that pattern is established by believers today, the miraculous is inevitably repeated in our day. Number five, biblical examples also established a common and acceptable spiritual principle that provoked the intervention of God in human affairs. It is a master key and a never failing spiritual principle that always unlock the presence and power of God regardless of the problem of man and the time or dispensation he lived. According to the eight teachings that I did on the spiritual principles of the upward look, the principle is the spiritual principle of obedience. It is a universal spiritual principle of relationship with God. The spiritual principle of obedience transcends the boundaries of time, color, race, language, and creed. The common denominator in the entire biblical example is that any time man's absolute obedience to divine instruction and standards is in place, the involvement of God in human affairs is secured, and his power for the manifestation of the miraculous is inevitably provoked. Brethren, time will not Allow me to examine all the biblical records of several cases in the Bible when people in different generations chose to look up to God in absolute trust and dependence. However, I have deliberately chosen to discuss three, to discuss three specific biblical examples of Jehoshaphat, of Ezekiah, 
and of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Having discussed Jehoshaphat and Ezekiah in the previous broadcast, I will conclude this particular series by considering Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego today. Brethren, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were examples of people in the Bible that looked up to God in extremely critical circumstances. It is interesting to know that they demonstrated five common experiences that are vitally instructive for us today. Number one, the security and safety of their lives was totally unpredictable. It was obvious that they were in real problem. Humanly speaking, they were totally edged in by their powerful enemy and there was no way they could have survived. Number two, the situation of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was urgent with a greater tendency for panic and confusion. They were face to face with death and something must be done urgently to avert what looks like an imminent doom. Number three, the intimidation of their enemy, who was the king, very powerful king of that time, was very strong, was very lethal, and very real and that intimidation must never be taken for granted at all the king was damn too serious for jokes the enemy had numbers the enemy had status the enemy had power the enemy had advantage because he was a political leader of that time by every human standard brethren Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego appear to be up against an enemy that is stronger and more formidable than them, and they were fighting a battle they cannot possibly win. Number four, their decision to look up to God was naturally risky, naturally unreasonable, and a reflection of their readiness to accept whatever may be the will of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were ready to go with God even if it means losing their lives. It was indeed a courageous action of faith. They actually jumped from a dangerous cliff and restfully trust in God throughout the fall, expecting God to catch them before they hit the ground. They chose to put all their eggs in the basket of God. They willingly refused to have any alternatives to God in the face of a highly tempting and seemingly hopeless situation. Number five, however, it is gratifying to observe that God never disappointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their absolute dependence on God eventually paid off. God came for them at the nick of time. He proved himself faithful, reliable, and dependable. God honored their faith and glorified himself in their delicate situations. I want you to settle down to read the entire stories in Daniel chapter 3, from verse 1 to 30. It's an inspiring story that I believe will help you to build up a strong faith in God as you expect him to come through for you. Before concluding to this broadcast, let me say that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were characters to be emulated for their unflinching faith in the upward look. They remain unaffected despite the threat and the intimidation of the king. Hear what they said, and I read from Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Wow! 
<laughs> this is the confirmation of godly trust. It can only be an audacity that is influenced by their knowledge of the faithfulness of God. The message is thrilling, impressive, and captivating. Brethren, Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego were ready to die for the cause of their faith in God. They had no alternative, so they frankly declared, Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. That is to say, they had the knowledge of God. Do you have the knowledge of God? Brethren, the question is this. Do you know that God is able to deliver? Because the knowledge of God that you have will inform the faith you can express in Him. If you do not know God, you will have no reason to express faith in Him. Even your so-called faith will have no substance because faith thrives on the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the Word of God. Very, very important. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had very sound knowledge of the God that they serve. They know he is faithful and that he will come through for them. And even if he chose not to come through at that particular time, they believe he has a higher purpose for their lives and that he will always do the best that he can do for them and he will always be glorified. This knowledge strengthened their faith to be strong and to remain unshakable in the face of the fiery intimidation and harassment from the most powerful man in their own generation. Brethren, do you know that God is able to deliver? Very, very important. Haven't you been convinced on all his recorded abilities? Do you still have any other avenue for help outside God? Remember, other alternative will bring disappointment and shame you know one of the statements in our popular gospel hymn declares that all other ground is sinking sand as a result of the upward look miracle happened in the lives of shadrach meshach and abednego this miracle cannot be denied it signifies the manifestation of the almighty god and this manifestation was provoked by their faith and trust in God. The Lord, with his stretched forth hand, delivered them because they challenged him to action due to their confession of faith. The, the, thoroughly, the thoroughly surprised and embarrassed king confessed the existence of the Son of God. I read from Daniel chapter 3, verse 27. Daniel chapter 3, verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains and the king's counselor being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them prepare your heart brethren to receive from the lord as you embark on the upward look you will not be the first to believe in God and prove him faithful. Our generation is not the one that will prove God unfaithful. God remains faithful. It is the medicine for all sicknesses and diseases. I mean, your faith in God. It offers a complete cure for, for any, from any calamity. God is still the same today. What he did for them, he will do for you today if you trust him like they did, regardless of the hopelessness of your current condition. It is well with you. I believe there are many more lessons you can learn as you take a personal study of the other biblical characters that we will not be able to check on this broadcast. Look through the Bible. Several other examples of biblical characters exist that, trust, that trusted God and relied upon him despite the hopelessness of their condition, and God never disappointed them. God never disappoints them, and God is still the same today. Next week, by the grace of God, I'm going to continue in this very big team. Look up. God's way is not down. It is well with you. As you keep trusting him, you will find him faithful always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you for this truth and for the lives of everyone connecting to this broadcast. Lord, I pray that you will shape the understanding and the lives of everyone according to the truth of today's teaching. Help every believer in Christ to know that it is not only wisdom to look unto God in unbroken trust and hope, regardless of the raging storms of life, but also to obey God without any reservation. Help us, O oh Lord, to deliberately and continually align our hearts, our minds and lives with the truth of God's word as we intentionally develop the spiritual discipline of trusting God and obeying divine instructions in the face of the uncertainties of life. Help every believer to deliberately cultivate a broken and contrite heart that trembles at the truth of scripture. Help every believer to pursue becoming everything God ordained them to become as the main motivation for living. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Wow, it's always a pleasure sharing fellowship with you and sharing fellowship together with the Holy Ghost on this broadcast. And I believe it is worthwhile. Till next week when, by the grace of God, I shall come with a fresh edition of Navigating Life Through Grace. I want to hand you over to the unfailing hands of God that is able to sustain you and give you inheritance among those that are sanctified. Keep developing your faith in God by believing the word of God and believing the promises of God. It doesn't matter the hopelessness or the critical nature of your condition or circumstances. Since we find examples in the Bible of those that have called upon God and trusted God in their extremely difficult circumstances, and God never failed them. We have reasons to believe that he will not fail us even today because he is the same God in different generations. See you next week by the grace of God. God bless you.